Hi, my name is uh, AJ Parliament, and I had the opportunity to fly to Mexico on a mission trip. I had a great time. It was a great opportunity because I got to fly for the first time. So that was very fun. The takeoff was the best part on the plane. So when uh, we arrived in uh, San Diego, we waited for our uh, Spanish pastor, Mr. Jesus, and his son-in-law, Dustin, to come pick us up to take us to the Airbnb. It was a nice house, it really was. So the uh, first day in Mexico, we kind of, we went to the church and we were looking at where we were going to pour the concrete at and we started digging. Then uh, the next day was when we actually did the concrete. It was very hard. It was heavy. I didn't really like doing it, but I still did it. It was fun doing it with my friends and everything. Yeah, on uh, Wednesday, we continued doing concrete. It was, like I said, it was very hard, but I kind of got the hang of what to do and everything. I remember it was, we had a concrete mixer and they wanted two buckets of sand, two buckets of gravel, and then one bucket of water. And then when you would pour the concrete, it was messy. It really was. I didn't know it could get that messy. And while we were doing concrete, the women were doing uh, VBS for the little kids. That was uh, great. On Thursday, we had a uh, tour day with a boat. Like, uh, I think we got there on one. And basically we went, you know, we saw the ocean and everything. And what was fun, it was my favorite part because I actually got to drive the boat. The guy asked me if I wanted to drive it, so that was pretty cool. I, I didn't know what he was saying because I don't know Spanish, but I kind of figured out what he wanted me to do. And that was kind of our, uh, that was kind of the last day. I'm glad that the Lord gave me the funds to go on this trip. It was really fun and I enjoyed it. Hello, my name is Brisa Keyless. I also had the opportunity to go to Mexico last July. Uh, in Mexico, we helped my grandfather at his church. The men went outside and laid down cement and picked up rocks and that stuff. The girls went inside and did a Bible school for all the children in the area that wanted to come. Then we also went sightseeing. That was the thing I liked the most. We went to La Bufadora, which is where uh, the water hits some rocks and it geysers up. At the end of the week, the church left and my family stayed one more week to be with my family. Hi, this is Darren Hughes. And I had the opportunity to travel to Mexico this past July with, uh, with our church here at Camp Creek. I must say that when the this particular mission trip was announced, I wasn't too keen on going. When you say July in Mexico, sounds kind of hot. And I was wondering why we didn't travel to Northern Canada instead. But nonetheless, we signed up because we saw it as an opportunity for our family of three to take part in a mission trip all together. In years past, my wife and son have been able to go on missions trips, and last year my son and I were able to go, but the three of us had not had that opportunity. And so we, uh, we signed up, although in my heart or in my mind, I was quite reluctant about uh, the idea of it. Uh, nonetheless, uh, I was reassured by Pastor Kiles it wouldn't be as hot as I thought it was going to be. We would see about that. So as the days progressed. Uh, we worked busily and many of uh, you in the church were able to help us uh, to raise funds to be able to finance this trip for each of us to go. Thank you for your opportunity to work in and around your house and to come and support our uh, fundraising efforts and it's thanks to each one of you and what you did whether you gave or prayed. Certainly grateful for uh, all that you did to, to get us to Mexico. And then it was, before we knew it, a week until the trip. And so that preparation of getting ready all came in a rush. And the next thing I knew, we were on the ground in California and picking up the van there that a church graciously lent to us. And we were able to, to travel there across the border. The area was quite beautiful uh, there along the coast. We soon found out that the people were quite beautiful and their uh, friendliness and their open arms to have us there to help and work with them. Uh, it was a real honor, a real opportunity to make new friends there in Ensenada. Brother Quiles' brother uh, came up from uh, La Paz and it was a, a great opportunity there to meet and bond with those wonderful folks. Pastor Quiles there in Ensenada at his church 
Uh, it was a, a great learning experience as we had to come together as a team, not only Camp Creek members, but also members from the churches there in Mexico. Though there may have been a language barrier, we came together and were able to get great work done, pouring concrete and painting, and of course, uh, vacation Bible school that was done there with the children, and the opportunity to go out into the uh, community and meet some of the folks there. While we didn't easily communicate via words, we certainly communicated with uh, the smiles and the uh, a willingness to stop and take a few minutes of their time to, to hear what we had to say and invite them to Vacation Bible School. Really enjoy not only meeting the folks there in Mexico and being able to be a blessing to them, but also it was a great blessing to work more closely with, a, with my church family. Many of these folks I travel with I've known for many years, but going together on a mission like this was a great uplifting experience for me in my life. And I know that my family benefited from it. I certainly benefited and found it to be a great blessing to us. And I trust that we were a blessing to those folks. Again, just wanted to say thank you to my church family for this opportunity. Hello. My name is Harrison Hughes. I was one of the men that went on the Mexico missions trip. It was my first time leaving the country, which was very interesting. I wasn't too thrilled to the idea of going to Mexico from the things that I heard about it, but my opinion changed after this trip. We met up with our Spanish pastor, Pastor Jesus, and his son-in-law, Dustin. They picked us up in a, uh, in a borrowed church van. So we loaded our luggage up into the van, and uh, we went to a pier, and uh, we just did some sightseeing went to take a couple pictures and then we went to go eat lunch at a um, authentic Mexican restaurant. I was nervous to cross the border from the things that I had heard. It was about a two hour drive. We got out at some spots, did some sightseeing. The view was really pretty. They had a lot of unique architecture and how they would build their structures on the side of cliffs. And then we finally made our way into Ensenada, which I think is Mexico's fourth largest city. Uh, we finally checked into our Airbnb, which was a really big and a really nice house. We worked at the church for, we did concrete mainly, so they wanted to do a, uh, almost like a driveway. The first day we had to dig and level everything out for the concrete mixer to come in the next day. So in the meantime, they delivered water and sand and gravel that we used to mix the concrete, and they delivered some of the concrete powder as well. We got that ready and prepped for tomorrow when we would eventually do the concrete, which I wasn't insanely thrilled about, but we did it anyway. It's now the next day. We woke up, ate breakfast. We were ready, refreshed, and uh, ready to do the Lord's work. After we were done doing the concrete, there wasn't really much left for us to do, so we just went ahead and started painting the fences. So we painted it, and they had a iron gate that was going to be installed. Sunday, we went to the La Bufadora, which essentially is a geyser or a blowhole, where water gets pushed into a cavern at the ocean, and all the pressure that builds up pushes the water out. But there was a lot of shops, there was a lot of different uh, food variants. They had a lot of different things, varying from coffee mugs to sombreros to ponchos to things of that sort. It was very interesting. They didn't have a lot of running water, or they did have running water, but you weren't really supposed to drink it. You had to pay for the bathrooms, which was very interesting. Um, some places you even had to pay for the amount of squares of toilet paper that you could use. Pretty much it for touristy stuff that we did. On Thursday, we got up, we went to the pier there at um, Ensenada, which is a really touristy spot. Cruise ships come in there a lot. We had a reservation to go on a boat tour. So we got on the boat, we went around, got to see some seals, got to see the harbor, things of that sort. And then we went and ate at a Korean barbecue. So essentially you fix your own food there, which is pretty interesting because I'd never been to one before. So getting to cook your own food at your table was uh, a different experience. 
the food there was great that we had in Mexico. We had a, we had a lot of authentic Mexican food. We had pork tacos, essentially. So th those tacos were really good. The next day, which I think it's Wednesday now, we had tamales. So we had uh, cheese tamales, pork, and beef. Those were really good. Um, we met a lot of people on the way, a lot of good people. And Mexico, yes, does it have things that aren't the greatest about it? Yes, but um, at the end of the day, you can see your glass half full or half empty. And I look back on it now, and I see it half full. I'm Pastor Lyons, and I was very proud of our group that went to Ensenada with us this year. Every year we go on a mission trip. Every other year it's foreign domestic, foreign domestic. So this year was foreign, and it was our second time ever going to Mexico. The first time was on the Gulf Coast, Tampico, and then this time was on the Pacific Coast in Ensenada, fourth largest city in Mexico. I had not known that before. When we got to the airport in Atlanta, Somebody was saying that there were a couple of arrests of some cartel drug lords in Tijuana, and therefore the military was expecting violence, so there were warnings against Americans going through there. So I said to the team, all right, anybody want me to call Clyde back and have him take you home again? And nobody was willing to go back, so that was good. I appreciated that. When we got there, we stayed in a very nice neighborhood. It was very beautiful. It was very well taken care of. We were told that it was a very safe neighborhood because it was where all the drug lords had their homes. <laughs> So, so I guess we were in a place nobody was going to cause us any trouble. Kind of made me wonder about the host who owned the place, how he happened to have these two beautiful homes next to each other. But anyway, we uh, got out into the neighborhoods and began passing out information about the VBS that was going on, inviting kids to come. And one of the very impressive things that I saw was how open all of the Mexican people were to the gospel. You didn't get any cold shoulders if you came offering the gospel among the Mexican people. And even people who maybe didn't go to church, they smiled, they were very appreciative, they took what you gave them. In the wake of Vacation Bible School, as one person's already said, there were a number of people that began coming to the church, and that was very encouraging to see that happen. We did concrete, the men did, the concrete outside, and sort of learned on the fly as we watched the Mexicans do it, and they showed us how to do it, and so we helped. And all a bunch of painting that we did, uh, the fence around the place, and the new gate that they would put in while we were there. I guess one of the things that really impressed me about the Mexican people was the hard work that they did. They were an impoverished people, and yet they did not allow their poverty to hold them back. They had no running water there where we were mixing the concrete. And when you go to the bathroom, you'd have to take a bucket to dip it in a barrel of rainwater in order to flush behind you. And the water ran in the streets, literally in the streets. It wasn't pipes carrying it out under the streets. It was trenches that were dug specifically for water above ground where you'd drive through it. In fact, the first couple of times we went, I figured out I was able to find my way to the church just by following the trail of water. But so a lot of poverty, and yet the poverty didn't hold the people back from doing what they had to to accomplish what was needed. I want to thank everybody that made it possible in our church, all the people who supported our fundraisers, uh, everybody that bought a taco, everybody that came to an estate sale, everybody that donated for the supplies that we were able to buy for them while we were there, the cement and the gravel that we were able to buy and uh, the prayers that were sent up for all of this to be possible. And also for the church on the other end in San Diego that lent us a van and saved us several hundred dollars doing that. And so I'm looking forward to next year's mission trip, and I'm looking forward to one of these days going back to Ensenada. It was a beautiful experience, wonderful church, good people, wonderful memories. Thanks to everyone who helped made it possible. Hello, my name is Jesus Quiles. I am a Hispanic pastor in, in Camp Creek Baptist Church in Cornelia. And um, 
This last uh, July, it was a really good experience going to my hometown, Ensenada, Baja California. And uh, it was a big blessing to see my local church going to my city where I was born and uh, see that love to, to missions. Our church in Mexico needed help. It was a big blessing to see all the teens, the ladies working together. And um, I saw that love for my local church helping my dad's church. And um, it was so, so great to see everybody working together. Uh, we have no experience in concrete and construction. But we were doing the job. And day by day, I mean, we, we, do, we did the construction and uh, the concrete, the painting. And... Uh, it was great, really great, because on the same church, this is the same place I met my wife. This is the same place uh, we got married. And now coming by with my five kiddos, it was like like a dream for me to be helping my church. And for many years, I had that thought, maybe one day we will go to my city in Ensenada and help. And it happened over after what, maybe 10 years or maybe 11 years. Before we went to Mexico, we had the meeting. Where are we going this year? And um, we made a decision to Ensenada and it was so great to be helping my church in Ensenada and um, be a blessing on that village and uh, on that church. And I mean, it was so great to see the local children's coming to the church for vacation Bible school and having a Bible lesson having craft, and uh, it, it was so great to see all this, and uh, I, I'm just really thankful to God because He led me to see this, that love from Camp Creek Baptist Church in Ensenada, Baja California. Hello church family, this is Keisha Hughes. I would like to say thank you for the opportunity to be able to go on the mission trip to Ensenada, Baja, California, Mexico. It was the first time I had ever been out of the country before and also my first experience in crossing the U.S. border into Tijuana, Mexico. In my mind, I thought maybe there was a single lane road with a checkpoint at the border crossing. However, it was quite different than I had imagined. There were so many cars all merging into several lanes of traffic. It was crowded and we had to wait our turn. All nine of us were in a borrowed church van and Pastor Jesus and his family were in their suburban. It was important for us to stay together while crossing the border so that we didn't get separated from Pastor Jesus. The border was divided by walls, fence, and barbed wire. There was also some broken glass pieces on the tops of some of the buildings near the border to prevent people from climbing over. We did have to stop at the border crossing for the guards to check our van. He checked in our dash and then opened the side doors to look at us inside. We were all silent. They also checked the back doors where our luggage was stowed. The guards seemed satisfied with the visual checks and then waved us on through the border. The area near the border was desolate. Many places were vandalized and vacant. 
It was a rough part of town for sure. Once we made it through the rough area, we were able to see some beautiful overlooks, the beach area, and the Pacific Ocean. Some of these stops were highlights of the Ensenada, Baja, California, Mexico. On Saturday, we went over to the church and began working, but first we went into the market area near the church. The area was basically two dirt streets with people set up on both sides selling whatever goods they could sell for extra money for the week. Some items were new and others were used, much like our yard sales in America, only this was on the street. We paired off with some of the church members and Pastor Jesus' family to pass out flyers and invite children to our VBS. This was quite an experience. I only remembered a few Spanish phrases and words to be able to communicate, but thankfully we managed well with our new friends. Once we finished, we headed back to the church so that the men could begin working, prepping and leveling the ground for concrete, which would be poured at the beginning of the week. We did have a small Bible club on Saturday morning with the local children. They were so sweet and well behaved. They were happy to be there and we loved seeing their smiling faces. Many of them walked from nearby. We sang songs and reviewed a Bible verse. Miss Samantha was able to tell them a Bible story in Spanish. Some hugged us before leaving and we told them we would see them tomorrow. On Sunday, we attended church with Pastor Jesus' family. We sang along with several familiar hymns. Hearing them in Spanish was different, but I was willing to learn. Pastor Jesus' sister-in-law, Nayeli, sang a solo, a song I recognized, Wings as Eagles by Ron Hamilton. One of the phrases of the song says, When our feet began to crumble, I mount up on wings as eagles. God gives us wings as eagles, and with Him we are able to soar. After Nayeli sang, Pastor Lyons preached in English and Pastor Jesus translated in Spanish. After church, we had a touristy afternoon planned. We visited the La Bufadora, the second largest marine geyser in the world. We also shopped at the market for souvenirs, ate many food type samples, and paid to use the bathroom, which was clean by the way, and enjoyed the view. Monday, we began our VBS with the children and the men began working on pouring concrete, old school style. Water was delivered in a water truck, a cement mixer, and the men began by sifting the dirt, gravel, and water to mix the concrete. Many wheelbarrow loads later, in two and a half days, the job was complete. A large concrete pad next to the church was finished. In the afternoons following our VBS, the ladies and some of the men worked on stripping and sanding off the old paint from the iron fence. Once this was finished, we were able to start priming and painting the fence. There was also a new sliding iron gate installed while we were there. Hopefully this was an improvement and will keep vandals out. On our last day of VBS, we were able to treat the children to Little Caesar's Pizza, which tastes different in Mexico. Coca-Cola, a special treat, and a pinata filled with candy. They were all so excited, they loved it. We were also treated to several authentic homemade Mexican meals, breakfast burritos, pastor tacos, which is seasoned pork, and tamales. Another highlight for our family was being able to surprise Harrison with a cake and celebrate his 14th birthday in Mexico with our church family and new friends. Once the work was completed, we were all able to do some sightseeing and shopping on our final day in Ensenada. We visited the harbor area and took a boat ride, souvenir shopped, and enjoyed a delicious meal at a restaurant with Pastor Jesus' family. The restaurant was similar to a Korean barbecue where you cooked your own meat at your table. This was quite the experience. Upon returning home, I am so humbled by my experience in Mexico. There are so many things we are blessed with, like running water to the bathrooms, clean streets, and clean drinking water. I am so thankful for Pastor Quiles, Jesus' dad, for allowing us to come help them complete these projects. It was such a blessing to serve, a great experience for all, and one I'll never forget. Thank you. I'm Megan Zimmerman, and this is my testimony. So the thought of going on a mission trip scared me at first. I was going somewhere I had never gone before, and it was intimidating. But then I started feeling excited for it because I knew that I would be doing the Lord's work. When we got to Mexico, I felt a sickly feeling as we rode through the hills, passing crumbling neighborhoods. 
The whole time we were there, I thank God for all that He has done for me and blessing me with the life that I have. I was nervous for the VBS that we were putting on for the kids as I would be leading the songs in Spanish. I was so scared of messing up, but the children loved it and I felt good I was able to use song as a way to do the Lord's work. Seeing the children have so much fun singing, crafting, and playing games just made my heart feel so good. I realized that they don't have the opportunity to do this every day like we do at our church. There were a few children who had touched my heart. Some children would try and share their snacks with me that we had given them. They wanted to share something with me, and that just showed the kindness in their hearts and how VBS influenced them. When I wasn't doing VBS, I was painting the fence for the church. We had done a lot for the church, and we were very proud of the way it looked after we finished. I had a lot of fun growing closer with my church family and also my new friends from Mexico. I loved everything about Mexico, especially the food, but getting to please the Lord meant so much more. I can't wait to see what the Lord takes me next. I'm Nancy Zimmerman. I'm so glad to know Jesus as my Savior. Without Him, I would be nothing. My daughter wanted to go on this mission trip. Then one day she said, why don't you go, Mom? I thought to myself, why don't I go? There's nothing stopping me. I'm so thankful I did. I'm so blessed to take a mission trip with my daughter. Not only have I grown closer to her, but with my church family that went as well. It was my first mission trip, but certainly not my last, after I saw how God works through us. I have really seen how truly blessed we are in the USA after going to Mexico. Some places were absolutely beautiful, but others not so much. I saw how terrible people live, and it brought tears to my eyes. One day we were passing out flowers for the VBS we were doing for the kids. There was a little boy who was riding on a bike, and he stopped and looked at me. So I waved him over, as I do not know Spanish, and gave him a flower. He got the biggest grin on his face, and it just made me so happy. At that moment, I realized how much of an impact someone can make. And even though I don't know these people's language, I was still able to communicate through hand gestures and facial expressions. Even though I couldn't do much in terms of physical labor, I helped the kids with crafts and painted. While I wasn't doing that, I took a lot of pictures to capture all the special moments and little details. When we were not at the church, we were at the house or eating someplace. The meals I had there also had an impact on me because I was able to experience the culture and it was a bonding time with my church family at the church that we were working at. A lot of things are different in Mexico than they are here. You don't drink the fountain water or you will get sick. You have to pay for the bathrooms and the toilet paper in public. And in some cases, you have to take buckets of water to use in the restrooms or to wash your hands because sometimes there is no running water. We are more blessed than we know. And until you have seen it for yourself, you don't get the full experience. We went to help others and it ended up being as much of a blessing to us as it was to them. My name is Rick Mason, and I was blessed by the Lord by allowing me to go on our mission trip to Ensenada, Mexico. You know, from the very beginning, the devil tried to discourage us from going with some of our members getting sick. And then at the airport we, in Atlanta, we heard that we might be in danger once we crossed the border because two drug cartels were feuding. But the Lord saw us through all these things, and we didn't have any trouble while we were there. Well, we flew from Atlanta uh, to Chicago and then San Diego. It was from San Diego, we drove across the border into Ensenada. It was a nice drive for the coast of the Pacific Ocean, and we had some very beautiful views, and we stopped several times and took some pictures. I didn't know exactly what to expect when arriving in Ensenada, but we found out that Ensenada's nickname is the Pearl of the Pacific, and it sure was. The harbor in Ensenada and the beaches were very pretty. Ensenada is nice, and once you learn how to drive on its streets and roads, there were a lot of four-way stops and a few, very few red lights. Just go when you think it's your turn. Now, the landscape of Ensenada is different than our North Georgia mountains, for sure. It has the Pacific Ocean on one side and then mountains on the other side. But their mountains do not have trees, only a few scrub bushes, and some don't have any at all. 
But outside of the downtown area of Ensenada, there is a lot of dirt and dust, and it takes some time to get used to. The weather was nice, though, with the getting up to only 74 degrees for the high. Well, the day after we arrived, we began working at the church, the Iglesia Bautista Fundamental Berea, which is the Berea Fundamental Baptist Church. The first thing we did was to uh, pass out flyers to invite the children in the neighborhood to our vacation Bible school, which started that very day and went through Wednesday of the next week. The ladies did the VBS and us guys started digging to level the ground and make it deep enough for the concrete for a new driveway to park their vehicles in a safe place. Let me tell you, this was a lot of hard work done by hand. We had to mix the sand, the rock, and the concrete and mix them together and then add water in a concrete mixer. The water had to be delivered by a truck because there was no running water. The best part of the work was the working with some of the guys from the church and also from Jesus' brother's church, Francisco. We knew a little Spanish and they knew a little English. There was a lot of pointing and gesturing going on and looking up words in Spanish and English in their phones. I did learn that shovel in Spanish is pala because I used it a lot. We also painted the fence and gate that was in front of the church. The ladies, when they finished with VBS each day, would join us on the painting. I think they outworked us there. The best part of the work was that we were working for the glory of the Lord and making new friends that we will never forget. We also were blessed by worshiping at the church on Sunday with Pastor Lyons preaching in English and Brother Jesus interpreting Spanish. And to hear the church members singing in Spanish, the songs that we have in our hymnals also was a blessing. Fellow believers worshiping together. We also enjoyed some sightseeing while we were there. We went to a place called La Bufadora where the ocean waves crash up against the rocks and then blows way up. We also visited the Ensenada Harbor where we went on a boat ride around the harbor and did some shopping and some eating there also. We also enjoyed everyone that worked at the church coming over where we were staying for some tacos and tamales. We had time of food, fun, and fellowship. The time there in Ensenada went by very fast. As they say, time flies when you're having fun. We will never forget this mission trip to Ensenada. The word that was done at PBS for the children and the friends we made will be something that we will never last forever. Thanks to everyone who prayed and also gave financially. You had a part in this mission trip too. Thank you. This is Samantha Keyless. First off, my in-laws asked me to thank the church and the missions group for coming. They hadn't had a group come in several years. And it was just such a blessing to them to have the work done, the cement put down, the fence put up. They really needed that in place for security reasons. It's really going to help. It was a blessing to them personally, but also to their church. And they really wanted me to just thank the church for allowing the group to come and the group for coming and doing all the work they did. Um, I also want to thank the church for praying for us for all the financial help that allowed the missions group to go out and do what we did and to finish our our jobs that we had there. Um, I didn't get to help too much with the cement, (laughs) but I did get to help with the VBS. And the thing that impressed me the most were the children that arrived. They came and they were just so happy to be there. They were so attentive to the lesson. I really went in and I was like, oh, this is gonna be really hard and I'm gonna have lots of discipline problems and I'm gonna have to get on to all these kids in Spanish and it's gonna make it really difficult. But it was just the opposite. They were so sweet. They were leaning forward, wanting to hear the stories. They were so excited about every little thing we did. One of the crafts we did was to make a butterfly and I was looking and we had a lot of boys there, but they were so excited to finish their butterflies and to show everybody what a great job they did. They loved all the crafts. Of course, they were excited about the snacks. You know, any little thing you gave them, any little piece of candy, it was just such a joy that come across their face to receive anything. And I really enjoyed just seeing that humility, I guess, that every little thing was just so special for them. They uh, listened very intently to the class that we were giving, and they were able to answer all kinds of questions afterwards. They also had questions about what the lesson was about, and several of them raised their hand and wanted to talk about salvation, but they weren't quite there yet. However, we were fortunate enough that we got to stay a couple days after the group left, and we got to go to that Sunday service after we had done the VBS. 
and several of the kids that had come to the VBS showed up that Sunday and they were excited to see us there, our family there, and talk to us. And one of them even brought their parents along with them. So it was nice to kind of see the results of our efforts, of our work that we did that week. And it was just a blessing to have those kids there excited. They asked when we were going to come back, and I told them I didn't know, and they said, well, you should come back next year. <laughs> so they're going to be waiting on us uh, there. But to me, that was a blessing for me to see those children. You know, here it seems like we do all kinds of things for the kids on our Bible schools, and sometimes it gets overlooked, but they just appreciated every little thing, and we're so excited. We... um had a few problems at the beginning of the week when we were arriving to the church on Monday to start the VBS. I looked over and saw that the school, there's an elementary school at the end of the road of the church. There were a ton of cars at the school and there were a ton of kids at the school. And I said, they're still having school. And no, they were having summer school, which a lot of the kids had to attend. We just had to adjust our time and it worked out perfectly. Um, we had to move it back about an hour, hour and a half. We were still able to get a good many kids. I think the most kids we had were 40 kids and you know they all came walking and it was almost a blessing that the school was right there and when school got out you know we would send somebody down there to say hey we're having Bible school and they would walk up to the church and that's what I enjoyed most about the uh, mission trip. My name is Titus Keyless Rainey. This mission trip was fairly simple. Every day after arriving at the church, everyone would begin their job. On the outside, everybody would be working on the concrete, while on the inside, they were having a neighborhood Bible time. And all the kids who came to the neighborhood Bible time came on their own. None of their parents came and dropped them off. Uh, I did take a break each day to play the piano for them. On um, the outside, everybody had to work and do their jobs. One of my jobs was to shovel the sand and the rocks into the bucket. We did have more help, though. My uncle came and brought his church, and he brought three teens with him. When all the work was done for the day, we would go do something. We would eat somewhere, go to a place to see something, or we would have somebody come over and we would have food. My favorite thing about the whole mission trip was the food. The food is way better than the food here, especially the tacos. <laughs> Hi, I'm Denise Mason. It was truly a blessing and a great experience to get to go to Mexico. On Saturday, the men began working and Bible school started. The Sunday service was wonderful. The singing was absolutely beautiful. We joined in when we figured out what the songs were. It was a blessing to be able to sing along with them. Each day of Bible school, we had more children come. Samantha did an amazing job taking care of everything. The children were so attentive and seemed to really enjoy everything we did. I helped with crafts and snacks. It would have been nice to be able to communicate with the children, but we made out just fine with hand motions, nods, and smiles. They were so precious. Shopping was fun, trying to figure out how much things cost. It was cheaper there. Traveling on the roads was an experience in itself. No lines, very few stoplights, and very bumpy. I'm not sure what the speed limit was, but it was fast. Thanks to Jesus, we saw some very beautiful places, and we had some wonderful meals planned for us. His mom fixed breakfast burritos one morning, a friend made tacos one night, and his mom and ladies from the church made tamales one night. The food was absolutely wonderful, much better than our food here. The fellowship was also wonderful. We made many new friends. The week went by so fast, but I have such sweet memories that will last forever. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to go. Thank you for your prayers and your giving.